And here he is, the coach is here. So, a little bit delayed there, eh? Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're joining from. i got a great chat lined up for us. You are with Coach Scott, Kinetic Cycle Coaching for all levels of cyclists who are enthusiastic, passionate about their fitness, about their performance, moving their fitness from a high level to an even higher level or from a zero level to a hero level, whether it be bike fitting, VO2 max, testing, whatever, you come to the right guy. I've seen it, done it, everything. Now, we start with an apology. I'm not feeling too well. 
I'm feeling sorry for myself. I'm involved in an experiment right now. You may have heard of it. It's called vaccination. And I've been running a headache for... I'm in day four now of a headache. Alcohol never left me with this much of a headache. There you go. That's saying something. So, if I feel a little bit down, or I look a little bit down, give me a kick up the backside and make sure I'm okay. I'm sure I'll be fine by tomorrow. Another little sleep and I'll be good. Okay. When you're fighting colitis and other injections, why do they have to put another one in? Look at the bruise I've got. Look at that. That's proper. Yeah, proper bruise. I was spotting blood. <laughs> anyway, this is a great topic. And this is one I could talk all week about. About rest, recovery. About the importance of dialing back. Because 99% of amateur athletes will overdo it. Believe it or not, you're training too hard. Training too often, training in the wrong intensities. But I'm going to share with you a little bit of fun, okay? Can't escape a bit of fun. I'm going to share a bit of fun with you uh, and how we can actually pick up on some of the metrics, start to learn the language of fatigue, but give you 10, yeah, 10 points to look out for. And let's see if everybody who's on live or whether you're on catch up, you can leave a comment and I will get back to you if one of the 10 is you or has been you at a particular point in your journey. Whether that journey's one month old or 30 years old. When did I start cycling? BMX and from the age of first main mega BMX, about the age of 12. Falcon Pro. Oh my God, it was beautiful. Chrome frame. Can you believe that? Chrome Ollie frame. Oh yeah. <laughs> And it's been, uh, well, it's probably been downhill ever since. Right, folks. Okay, thanks for joining in. Uh, pop in the chat, say hello, introduce yourself if you're new. We've got a great little community growing. If you've got a question, you can make sure that you make, you save it to the end, pop it in. Somebody else will remind me when we get to questions. And I'll go through the topic. Is slowly and steadily as possible. And you can hear me in my poshest BBC Scottish accent. Yes, how, how does that sound? Is that, that, that okay? People are often commenting, please slow down, Scott. I can't understand a word you're fucking saying. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. That's just the way it goes. Right, folks. I want to start with, let me see. I want to break your recovery up into three. Three areas, add a fourth in that you th should be thinking about all the time. And as we go along, what I'll do is I'll throw in little anecdotes, things that happen. Now, I'm also going to give you the touch test. Yeah, you do the Scott Kinetic Cycling Coach touch test. So this is really easy to do and you can do it live. You, know, you just got to touch yourself. Now, that's not something that's inappropriate, please. Best behaviour. Okay, we save that for the other channel. <laughs> That's a joke. Please, YouTube, don't send me other, any more emails warning me about my conduct. Please, I'm a good boy. But we'll look at the different phases. We'll look at the touch and we'll do what's called the stare test as well. You don't have to do that right now because it means leaving the screen. But you can probably, if you're on your phone, walk up and down some stairs. So what I want to do first is talk to you about what we call the micro. Now, I want you to look at the... Uh, the juxtaposition. Yes, believe it or not, I did teach English for a period of time. Can you believe that? The Scotsman who taught English. Yes. Oh, what, what? Right, the micro rest building blocks. That juxtaposition, rest and building. Scott, I don't understand. Well, remember, just in a basic sense, when we rest, we absorb, we adapt, we regenerate. Okay, we regenerate. So the micro rest building block is what you have got in a week-to-week -week basis, okay? So this may be one rest day, two rest days. So today is Monday. Most of us are still in Monday. Where is your rest day? So you should have at least one, ideally two days, where you are completely allowing the body to rest. They are not recovery days. They are different. So the difference between rest and recovery. So when we train, we place the body into a catabolic phase. Catabolic sounds like catastrophe. That catastrophe phase 
puts pressure on the immune system, so it overloads the system with what we call free, ad free radicals, oxidative stress, basically destroying living healthy tissue. So we need to rest, lower that immune, uh, lower the inflammation through work done by the immune system. We need to do what's called resynthesis of proteins. This is when the muscle cell heals, grows stronger. Therefore, if it grows stronger, it puts out more power. When we do recovery, and I'm going to come over this again, most amateur athletes will go at too high a pace to really endorse recovery. So therefore, they delay the resynthesis of proteins. So these amino acid chains that form your... Remember, your muscle is two fibres, actin and myosin, that slide over one another. Okay? That sliding action itself causes friction. Friction causes heat, causes damage. So we must allow that to heal. Now, depending on your starting point, where your fitness is right now, depending on the duration and the intensity of the workout, will depend on that recovery. But I would often say, if you're starting out, you should have at least 48 hours, even if you're pretty fit, between hard sessions. Okay? So that means if you've got an intensity that's above threshold, and it's gone above threshold for more than 20 minutes, that's deemed it's going to be a hard workout for you. So you need at least 48 hours. If you're a fast twitch fiber athlete and you put out that big power we've talked about before, you've got a peak power, guys, you're over 1100, over 1200, you may need a little bit more if you're an older athlete who's starting out on their fitness journey. Otherwise, you're training on the top of already damaged muscles who haven't healed and you're just delaying the process of getting stronger. Now, this becomes a benefit the fitter we get when we train on top of fatigued muscles as long as there is a rest period coming up. So I want you thinking about that now. Monday, okay, what's my schedule for the week? Hell, I'm just going to go out, Scott, when I feel like it, when I get a minute, or when the kids are driving me crazy, or when my wife or my husband's just doing my head in, I'll just head out. That's not really a structured plan. That's not going to get you very far. You need to try and build in your plan A, when you can get out, a plan B, if that one falls down, where your hard sessions are, where your easy sessions are, and where at least two days. For most people, two days off the bike is going to allow you ample time. So if you've looked on or you've listened to the podcast before, and we've talked about the 3-2 strategy, three days on, one day off, two days on, one day off, that sort of thing, okay? So the micro rest is your weekly rest periods, not including days where you just do recovery. They do not count. So recovery done well is in zone one. Why zone one? You know this already. This is an intensity that is not physiologically adaptive. So what's the point doing it, Scott? We do it because it allows us to increase blood pressure and flush out waste materials that are left from harder workouts. They hover around in the bottom of the drain of the muscle. They're the scum layer when you're one of these people who sits in filthy bath water. Oh, it's so relaxing though, Scott. I have a lovely scented candle and I listen to beautiful music. <laughs> okay, that's what's left in the muscle cells. And if we do the zone one correct, we can increase the blood pressure. So increase the pumping action flush out this waste material and help to strip the lymphatic system of that extra fluid that she's holding on to because of all the carbohydrates you've been loading up because you've been fueling really well. So one day, maybe a zone one day. But what happens is the zone one day tends to turn into a zone two, zone three. Oh, I feel a little bit, oh, I feel quite sexy now. I feel quite good. And we start to go a little bit quicker. And we screw up the recovery day and it becomes an aerobic day. And suddenly it's just become a little bit harder. So we've just delayed that recovery. So I want you turning off the ego always and having a clear plan. These are the days I'm going to go hard. This is the time in the hard day where I'm going to go super hard and so on. Okay, so 
Where's your rest periods? I've asked you now, have all of you got at least one or two clear rest days where you're off the bike? Mm. Sometimes that's hard. Your mid rest, uh, look at those terrible uh, speech marks I've put there. I can't get my computer to do the one the right the way. You know, get it like that. There you go. That's another a video. Technology skills by Coach Scott. <laughs> no, please. So mid rest. This is when we're looking at how many weeks in a row will we progress our key workout or how many weeks in a row will I continue to have high intensity. So let's say generally we're not in race season or we're out of sportif or even challenges that you've got set. I would say if you're a beginner, and, and I mean by that you're saying inside your first year of training, you'd potentially go no more than two weeks without having a rest week. If you're a little bit more experienced, you may go three weeks before you have a rest week. And that rest week can be deemed a recovery week, whereby you would switch off all the hard sessions. You don't switch off high intensity. You may just have little 30 second efforts, little efforts on hills. But you would do a couple of things. One, you would reduce the duration to make sure that you don't go above two hours so that you don't eat into the glycogen stores that you've been replacing. You keep frequent, so you would have a minimum of, say, three workouts. You may then, depending on what your micro rest is in a week, you may add another day. So you may have three rest days, but there would be no high intensity. You would spin to stay activated. This may be zone one or even zone two. That would be okay. But that week allows you to really soak up all the efforts you've done absorb all the efforts, reduce the inflammation, heal the muscle fibres and feel fucking awesome. Your awesomeness should come out. I think that's the medication kicking in from the COVID. Yeah, I don't think I should have taken that crack. <laughs> that was a joke. Please be responsible with all forms of drugs. Take them the correct way <laughs> and in the correct doses. So I've forgotten what I was talking about there. Yeah. But anyway, in that mid period, yeah, so you may add that extra day, but what you're trying to do is to feel awesome and then control it. Far too often, here I go again, I'm saying that phrase, the amateur athlete will start to feel awesome and think, wow, I'm in a Strava segment. Oh, I've got to go for it. I've got to go for it. Oh, it's a tailwind. Oh my word. I can catch that rider on it as well. Yeah. I'm afraid it's true. It was bullshit. You've got to control. Okay, plenty of fish in the sea. Plenty of time. But if you ruin or spoil the recovery week, then all that will happen is you will just delay the point of pop. Okay? And we'll go through that with the, the symptoms and the signs and the language of what's going on. Okay? So, where is that week? Have you built it in? Can you build it in around some family situations, some work situations whereby the ego is not driving and whipping you? Get out on your bike. Please, Scott. Bike. You know, it's like a, it's like Annabelle, that little bloody doll. There's mine staring at me in the background there. You know, and it's going, Scott. Ride me. <laughs> Scott. I know, my cred's going crazy. Right, okay. So, what about macro? Now, macro, I don't really want to spend too long about. The macro is where we would come to the end of a block of training. You've done your key event, and we're going to take some time off. For a pro nowadays, it could be anywhere between a week and 10 days. I would always suggest you pick a month. And you don't stop training. See, this is the beauty. A hero of mine, a guy called Sean Kelly, would go cross-country skiing. And he would ski in the winter time and he would have that month where he would just change. So I like macro uh, macro tests to happen, macro periods to happen, basically to reset the mindset as well. So you may have been cycling for six months, working away at it hard. Why not take up some hill walking or, you know, other forms of exercise? You may take up some swimming, you may take up some paddleboard exercise, something that just takes you away, 
because by taking away something that you love will just make you want it a little bit more when you come back to it. Even if you do, you're as passionate as me about cycling, you would cycle every day, there needs to be a time when you say, hey bike, I'm sorry, but, you know, we've been getting on really well together, but I've come to a decision that, you know, we just need a bit of time, we need a bit of space. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm going to start sleeping with my wife and you're going to have to stay in the shed. Scott! Okay, no, we don't do that, right? So, but we have, you have that breakup. And that can be really, really positive. Now, the macro rest must not get confused with the forced time off the bike. So, I've been off the cycle, the bicycle. I came off the bicycle on Thursday morning and I went back on this morning. So, that was Friday. Saturday, Sunday, back on Monday, so about three days. Quite a long time when you've got a British Championship in less than two weeks. Uh, not ideal, uh, especially as my teammates are going, eh, hey, you're old, slow, sick, and now you're not training. What are you doing? <laughs> so, not good, but mindset's okay, yeah? Body's just feeling a little bit bad. But we have to do that. So the forced stress is that illness, injury, whereby it can become really, really hard. But what I always say to athletes, embrace it. This is a really good period to do something else. Yeah, we may still be able to do some core work. We may be able to spin a little bit and focus on some skill work through the pedaling. But that time off is going to allow your body to heal. And very few athletes actually see that. I've said this before, training's easy. Super easy to bang your head against a brick wall. Work super hard. That's not what moves you forward. It's the healing process, okay? It's the tissue repair that allows you to get stronger and having a key period of work hard, softer session, another hard session, then a day off. Then a soft session, hard session, day off. You've got to have that ability, okay, to switch off. Now, when we switch off, say, from a macro period or a mid period, what you've got to remember is you must then ramp up the body again. You can't just have a day off and think, wow, here we go. I'm going to hit a new FTP. It doesn't work that way. You've got to have that warm up and then cool down, but in huge, big terms as well. So it may be one ride for a whole day, maybe a, a 60, 90 minute activation day after some time off. Allow the body to kick in those key enzymes. I see far too many riders. Oh, I've had two days off the bike and I feel like an old man. Well, you are an old man and the two days off the bike have actually just deactivated those key enzymes. I've talked about this before. You've got to allow the body time because it doesn't like exercise. I've said this before, okay? It doesn't like putting weight on. That is a true story. It doesn't like losing weight. That is the truth. It doesn't like exercise, that is the truth. You have got to adapt the body to get used to it. So once it gets used to it, it's very clever. Oh yeah, it's clever. It learns from the experiences you put it in and it prepares itself. So off the bike, back on and activate. I did two sessions today, 30 minute session in the morning, zone one with a tiny little bit of revving wait for four or five hours, do a second one, but then high revving. So what I mean by that is a soft gear and then 100, 105, 110, 120 RPM ramp through. Okay, that neuromuscular work really activates the body, it speeds thing up. I'm getting a higher power, but I'm getting it in a soft gear, but I'm really trying to shake the system and just wake it up. No more than half an hour, 40 minutes, bit of sweat, and see how I feel the next day. <laughs> My headache will go away. Oh, oh. <laughs> There's too much space in my head for the headache to rumble around. I need to, oh, don't do that. Oh God, why did I do that? Oh. Right, okay, so micro, weekly. Where are your weeks? Where are your days rest this week? Your mid, how many more weeks have you got before you recover? A lot of my athletes will recover next week. We'll throw in a little test. Some of them are going to be doing what's called a MAP test, maximal aerobic power. And we're going to use that instead of FTP, your MAP or your old 
fashion VO2 max. We use that and we flip around over map. This is high quality training whereby you're going to get huge returns. 40 minute workout, boom, it's like dynamite. Yeah, it's going to just blow a hole because all the fitness has been done and we're ready to do some map work. Oh, oh I'm excited. Okay, what about, what about then uh, signs and symptoms? Having a little bit of fun. Right, touch test. Okay, so let me uh, let me switch that off and let me see, did I do a touch test little? You know, do you pass or fail the touch test? Now the touch test is exactly as it is. You've got to touch yourself. So I want you thinking about just pure basic high school science. You've he all heard of DOMS, a delayed onset of muscle soreness. So the DOMS uh, phenomenal is not lactic acid. I hear people say, oh yes, my muscles were soaked in lactic acid. I was bathing in this stuff. It was sheer bliss. And now the pain I have, oh, it's heavenly. That's bullshit. Absolute. Okay, it's not lactic acid. The DOMS is an effect that is to do with uh, the actual friction buildup. Okay, remember, when the muscle hook and eye hook together, okay, you know, this causes a little bit of tearing effect. And we all know this. And then we get the amino acid development protein, boom, through the diet, punch it up, muscle grows stronger. So the touch test is quite simple because DOMS will leave pain in the muscle. You know that. So when you touch your muscles, yeah, I'll use the foam roller. We'll do a little bit of foam rolling. Remember, foam rolling is, I, I won't get into it too much, but a lot of it's a lot of bullshit. It's not going to do a great deal. It can ease out trigger points, but the muscle is so thick, especially your IT band. That's like whipping a saddle on a horse. It's, it's, it's not going to feel anything. But the tenderness of the muscle. So right now, if you touch your muscles, okay, your muscles, yeah, <laughs> touching your muscles. And what you can do is you can start to feel tender areas. Okay, you'll start to feel tender areas. Now, a lot of them could be, you know, I can feel trigger points in my arms. You might find that funny. You know, why would I have trigger points? I don't use my arms, friend, but they're, they're there. They've been there years. Now, these trigger points, these are different. This is where the, the nerve and the muscle fibers around it have bunched up and they need relaxing. And that's where a foam roller is really good. But just massaging your legs gently and feeling them and how tender that feels, that can give you an indication of muscle soreness or inflammation levels in the muscle cells. And that could give you an idea of, hey, Scott, this is quite tender. What's that suggesting? Well, it's suggesting that you're maybe not eliminating, eradicating, flushing, removing, oxidizing, whatever we want to call it, all of the waste materials from the workout. And we're being left with some of them in there because you haven't got a rest day, you're pretty shit at doing zone one flushing and you're just pretty crap at doing uh, easy sessions basically so you're just pushing all the time but you're not pushing hard enough to actually make any gains because it's your ego that drives you if I'm not training I'm not gaining if I'm sitting idle I'm getting lazy that whole mantra yeah you got to get moving to get fit remember bullshit alarm's going to go off again soon so that touch can be really important and it is important to get massage. Remember, a pro will finish their session. They've got massage, they're getting their food made for them. They're pretty much looked after. Man, you gotta get home and you gotta look after the kids, you know. You know, because you know, when if you're anything like me, well, my daughter's now quite old, but yeah, you just lock the door and hope they don't wake up and now you go for two, three hours. <laughs> Put a fresh nappy on and pff, you'll be okay for a few hours, won't you? Leave them a box of uh, chocolates or something. Again, disclaimer, I only ever did that once, okay? And I knew my wife was coming home and the, she couldn't get near the alcohol uh, trolley. <laughs> but that idea of, you know, you got to make sure that, you know, you can do, do like a little bit of a self-massage. Now, the stair test is one that I would use a lot. Say that you've got a flight of stairs at home or you've got them at work. If you are, say, on an easy day or a recovery day and you're walking upstairs and your legs are burning, that is not a good sign. It is a real good indication that your legs are fatiguing or there is 
muscle soreness in there. And we've got to get that muscle soreness out. Now, if you're sitting thinking, shit, Scott, I've got that all the time. Hey, you might be on the road to, you're on a road to overtraining. Okay, if you're on that road, overtraining is not as like, oh my God, overtraining is worse than COVID, Scott. It's not. Okay, it's easy to fix, but you've got to pick up on the signs of it. And one of them is that continual muscle pain. I go out riding and I just can't get any power, coach. My legs seem to hurt. I've got this burning sensation in them all the time. Yeah? Okay. If you had a burning sensation every time you went to the toilet, would you do something about it? Hell yeah. Wouldn't tell anyone, but I'd do something about it. Maybe tell the doctor. Okay. So why are you not doing anything about having a burning sensation in your leg muscles all the time? Yeah, think about it. Okay, no pain, no gain. Uh, do you want me to go and find that bullshit buzzer again? Remember, there is a time when we've got to relax and recover, okay? Right, so that's really, really important. So up the stairs is a good little test. Legs are on fire, just climbing up the stairs. Yeah, so just start to listen to the to the sounds. For the... For the for the field test, just when you're watching television, try and get your legs stretched out. Remember, if you you sit a lot with your legs crossed as well, don't forget that that is placing undue stress on the pelvis. We could be blocking blood flow. I, I mean, it's that, it's that important. So if you've got bad posture when you're sitting, look at me right now, you know, I'm leaning forward, scapulas are abducting, protracting, like I'm on the bike. You know, I'm up. Nice posture, okay? So I am aware of it. Of course I am. Do I do it all the time? Hell no. Of course I don't. Do you think I am a monk? <laughs> uh, sometimes being a nun. Yeah, fancy dress. Did a nun once. Did, it was funny. Yeah, funny story there. But you get my idea. Yeah. So start to pay attention to that. Let me look at, at uh, how can there be indications Give me some signs, coach. Come on, who am I? You know, how's this happening? Right, so what, what I want you thinking about, before we dive into these, and I'll give you 10 if I can remember them, right? I've probably got about 20. I want you understanding, piece together some of the other chats we've done, the physiological responses, the emotional responses, when we talked about uh, mood profile, and I talked about that iceberg profile, we talk about the psychological responses. These are all happening to the body all the time. And they create signals. These signals uh, must be adhered to, listened to, acted upon. Remember, do the same and expect different results. Doesn't happen. Insanity. Einstein. A lot brighter than me. So, the emotional, the psychological responses that we're getting, what do we do with them? Do we act on them? Do we listen to them? Do we change? Do we know what to do with them? And what I mean by that is there are chemical changes in your body all the time. Men and women, okay? Men and women. I'm not saying that men are going to go through a menstrual cycle, but they will go through hormonal changes. And this will affect the way that we feel, our moods, our motivations, you know, our commitment levels. Women will as well. Okay? So, training will place extra stress on the system that is like a cooking pot. It's like a jar of hormones all being stirred around by your ego. Train, train. I'm tired. Get out, you lazy man. But I'm really tired. If you don't get out, you will make no progress and you will become the fattest, slowest person in your club. Oh, please, no. They make fun of him. That will become you. And they'll make fun of you. Out you go, out you go. You see where this is going? Yeah. Not good. So, what I want you to think of, maybe last ride, uh, maybe last couple of rides, you go out and you're a solo, on a solo ride, boom, out you go. And say the coach, me, someone said, hey, send me a photograph of where you come from. Take a picture. I do it all the time. Take a picture of your beautiful area and you go out saying, yeah, I'll take a picture, coach. Yeah, I'll send a picture. Out you go. You get into the warm-up. You start motoring along. You start looking at your computer. Bit of a tailwind here. Oh, I'm not going to stop here. I've got a good speed going. You become a knob, okay? You just become somebody 
who's obsessed with the metrics. You're not even going to stop and look at the scenery. Never mind. Slow your bike down. And take a photograph. <laughs> Woe betide the man who stops. Okay, but then you've got to work out. Oh, I'll pause my Garmin. Oh, shit. Oh, I hope I don't stop. I hope I don't lose this ride because I think I went really quick up that little segment between those two lampposts. If it wasn't for that woman on the bread basket, oh, yeah, I could have got faster. Okay, you're becoming a dickhead, right? And you're becoming over-obsessed. Now, worse than the person that won't take a picture is the person who goes by another cyclist clearly in a little bit of distress, clearly not able to get their tyre off, clearly got a puncture, clearly not got any signal on their phone and you'll do, you'll do a match, everything okay and they will always say yeah I'm fine go on and you do that is a no-no no matter what the intensity or effort or training you never ever go by somebody without at least stopping and saying are you sure you're okay? Because Coach Scott says the first response from most cyclists is a little bit of embarrassment. You can't get your tyre off, can you? And you think that everybody can do that. You can't fix a puncture, can you? You've tried to phone your wife and she's not answering because she thinks you're a dickhead. Yeah? Yeah. How did you know? Because it's true. Don't ever go by someone. Yeah. So if you've got into that habit of, yeah, I'm out here and the only thing that matters is my numbers. Think about it. That could be a sign that you are entering into that sort of nomadic place whereby it's you and your ego. That's not a good place to be in. You can comment if you've ever done that. Don't do it again. Okay, next point. I would say, have you become an ass? A-S-S. -S -S. The ass is somebody who won't take a picture or who won't stop for somebody. The ass is someone who is addicted to average speed. Yes. They are an average speed seeker. You like that? A-S-S. -S. Yeah, they're an ass. And I've talked about the average speed seeker before and all of you have done it at different points. Come on, put your hands up. You've all done it. You've seeked that average speed. You've pushed. All you're interested in is that one average speed. Well, as you know now, the body loves homeostasis, e equilibrium, steady state. It will plateau way quicker than you think. But I'm pushing hard, coach. You're not pushing hard enough, but you're pushing at the same intensity. It works that out. Remember, threshold is a huge range. Okay, a massive range. And it doesn't change. All that changes are the cosmetic furnishings around it and how you absorb oxidized lactic acid and resist fatigue. How you fuel, how you hydrate, etc. You're genetically set with it, right? We play around with it according to our level of fitness. So don't become an ass, average speed seeker. Doesn't work. Have it for intervals, have it for efforts. But if you're feeling yourself getting in there, you are going to fatigue way quicker than anyone else. And you're going to burn rubber and glycogen without building fitness. That is true. Okay, what about uh, you're cycling suddenly, you're not taking so much rest, and this is a great one, and it happened, uh, and I said it to someone yesterday. I had people round to my house, all within COVID regulations, more to try and keep me motivated because I knew I wasn't feeling well, and I said to one person, Jesus, you're boring. <laughs> In a polite way. So we've come out of lockdown, so if you've got any friends and all they talk about, well, People who think that, it, you know, I, I love cycling. Of course I do. It's my job. But please don't talk to me about it all the time. Yes, my FTP scout's gone up by 72 watts and they're like, fuck off. I'm not interested. I'm here to have a laugh and a bit of a crack. Yeah. If your chat is suddenly got all nutrition, hydration, electrolytes, FTP, step back. You know, you're going into a place where I promise you, it's going to catch you out. People are just going to look at you and go, what's happened to them? Do you remember when they used to be fun? Now, your training is serious, but to you, you've got to understand, like, I was a teacher for 25 years. One of the worst things that teachers do, any teachers online, right? If there's any teachers online, I bet you're guilty of it. So you go out, so my wife, she's not a teacher. Yeah. You go out and other teachers are saying, hey, 
What do you think of uh, Bobby Joe? Oh, God. What, what was he like on Tuesday? Did you have him? Oh, yeah. And what about that new scheme of work that we've got to cover? Fuck off. Stop talking about teaching in your spare time. Okay? Nobody else is interested. I promise you. I, I seriously do. Have another string to your personality. So it's the same with cycling. So if, you, if you're constantly, uh, you know, it's almost like you're submerged in it. Stop. You're overtraining. You're becoming too deep into it. Is that you? Now, the next one's really easy. And it has happened to me a few times. And I've, I've stepped back and I've watched my reaction. And this is what I call uh, the upload tantrum. So someone's gone out for a ride. I'll get messages on a daily basis from athletes. Hey, Scott, I've done the ride. It won't upload. Well, is it uploaded to your legs and lungs? As I always say, well, yeah, I did do it. I trust you. I believe you. You don't have to prove to me. I believe you. So why is it people have that upload tantrum? Well, what are they trying to prove? If you've done the ride, you've done the ride. It's in there. Just write it in a book. Keep a record of it. If you're trying to work out your macro and your micro rest days, you write it down. Okay. You can't even go onto Strava and do a manual upload. Okay, it does happen if you're trying to keep a record. But if you're having a tantrum or you're having a meltdown because it won't upload to your favourite app, okay, then you need to seriously have a little think of your training and you're potentially in that overtraining or you need a rest, you need a break, you need to sort of step back and say, hey, this is maybe getting a little bit too much for me, okay? Because it doesn't matter. You ride, it goes into your legs and lungs. I promise you, there's no science yet that stopped that upload. Okay. Now the next one, this will be about the fifth, is uh, I've kind of mentioned it before. You have no control in zone one. You have the inability to turn off Mr. Ego or Mrs. Ego and go into zone one. So I give you a suggestion. Do your zone one work on your indoor trainer. Yes, even if it's a sunny day. Go on your indoor trainer and do zone work. Don't upload it if you're worried about the speed. But I really do urge you to do it. And don't put pissy comments like recovery ride. Honestly, I'm giving that. You're an amateur cyclist trying to get fit. A recovery ride, yeah, but really do you need to just put easy ride or something? Recovery ride, I see it so often, and it's not a recovery ride. People use the word steady ride. Really? What's a steady ride? Hmm? Is it steady as in it's not quite recovery, but it's not quite as hard as I can go tune on the bars because I wasn't getting Stravas? Or was it because you didn't get any KOMs, you put steady? I've seen people put steady when they've been out in a club ride. I mean, I'm chewing the handlebars riding my balls off and somebody's put steady I think fucking steady I'll give you steady <laughs> so have a little bit of think about how you name them yeah now yes naming them is important because you can look back if you've got a record and you're looking but only if you're looking okay try and have that sort of global vision of the rest days and the hard days yeah how they populate your week and your month really really important Okay, uh, where are we now? What have I got? Oh, yeah. So let's get into a little bit more physiology. So you've gone out for a ride. You're well hydrated. You're well fueled. It's a warm day. Your heart rate won't peak. It won't go anywhere near peak. This is a sign of overtraining where the body is trying to protect you and it cannot reach those higher levels because there's too much inflammation and you're in that catabolic phase. Remember, catabolic catastrophe when the body's been broken down the immune system is at its max it's trying to hoover up all the waste materials while dealing with all the other stress that you've got in your life maybe you've got young children and you're not sleeping very well maybe you've got a dickhead of a boss and you're not enjoying work too much maybe there are other things communication issues maybe in family relationships maybe things are just not going very well for you and your training is just adding to the burden of the stress that your immune system has to work with. Okay? Heart rate won't peak. It won't go anywhere near. But you feel like shit. You feel like you're working your hardest. 
You're really working hard, but it just won't go up there. That is a sign that you need to rest. Maybe it's coupled with the, oh, my legs feel super sore as well. And I'm struggling to get up the stairs. Okay. So you put all that together and say, hey, I need some rest. I need two, three days just off the bike. Boom. Okay. You're tired or fatigued all the time. Now, don't everybody comment and say, that's me every day of the week, Scott. I mean, when you sit down, middle of the hour, all you want to do is go to sleep. You're driving in your car, a short commute in the morning. You've been up, you've had breakfast, you're in the car, you've got a 20, 30 minute commute. You're nodding off. That is not a good sign. That is a sign that the body is wanting a little bit more sleep. Now, there's a complex issue with what we call adenosine in the body and the volume of adenosine will send us to sleep and we try and switch off adenosine binding and such and it can be done as you know with caffeine so a lot of people will take caffeine and if you're super sensitive to caffeine whoa, it has a big effect but all you're doing is delaying that build up you're still tired okay and the only way to replenish that is sleep but I got a young family Scott and I'm just not getting some sleep. Well, you need to make some adaptations to other areas of your life because if you've got a consistent influx of oxidative stress through a young family or poor sleep, you've got to do something about it. So you accept that and you make some changes maybe in the volume of water you drink, the volume of vegetables it will take. We try and reduce. Maybe we'll have a little bit more vitamins. Maybe we'll do a little bit more relaxation therapy. Try a little bit of meditation or just mindfulness to try and relax and reduce oxidative stress. Maybe just tell your boss, hey boss, you're a complete and utter dickhead. I'm under so much pressure at the moment. You have got no sensitivity to my situation. I've got a young family, a demanding uh, partner, and I'm trying to train. And you give me this extra workload. How dare you? (laughs) Now, obviously... Don't try that if your boss is a complete dickhead because you might get the sack and we don't want that. But you get my idea. Okay. (laughs) So if you're tired all the time, think about that. What are you going to do? Get some sleep extra at night. Make some changes. You can do it. Just you've got to create these extra little tweaks to your habit. If you want to train, it's not just as easy as climbing on a bike, is it? Oh my word, it's so more complex, Scott. What if you are a poor sleeper? Yeah, has there been an influx of stress into your life that is affecting your sleep? But you're training. If you're carrying that extra bit of inflammation, that feeling of fatigue, your sleep will be impacted. So if this happens for, say, three, four, five days a week, look at your training and take some rest. Again, minimum three days. Maximum five is enough. Boom. Add a little bit of extra walking in. Stay off the bike. Allow the body to heal. You won't lose all the fitness people. You just put the ego in a little box. You tell it to be quiet and you understand that you're making this decision for the benefit of everyone in your circle. Okay? But you've got to address the sleep issue because it's going to be hit from so many different angles. And if you don't get it, it just builds up and builds up. It is the best form of recovery. Okay, the best form, without a doubt. Start to, here's another thing, there's a little tip you might do. So what we do with a lot of athletes is, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you may have a routine, I've got my breakfast, I take vitamin, mineral tablets, and I take them in the morning. Try some of them at night. Okay, I know it's a bit wacky, but I'm I'm not active, Scott. Take them at night. So sometimes like a multivitamin, if you take them, maybe you're, say, my age, over 50, you take a multivitamin, because I'm so old. <laughs> take it at night, little cup of cocoa. Take your little vitamin tablet, okay? Not Viagra. No, 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 that'll really upset your sleep pattern. <laughs> we save that for the time trials. <laughs> That's another video. Yeah, how I got a PB on Viagra. That would go viral, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> now... What you do is try it at night. So by when the body's relaxing and sleep and it absorbs and how that can help with the recovery. Yeah, I know lots of athletes, even pro athletes that will take uh, what we would call regrow products first thing at night. Add them to a cup of hot chocolate or, or something like that. Cocoa or Ovaltine of your particular, you know, is that 
to old fashioned. Right, uh, other little signs that things are not going right, you can't hold the wheel. So every club, my, my, you go out, I heard a rider, friend, a friend of mine, and he said, Jesus, I couldn't hold the wheel of the oldest guy in the club. And that made him feel really bad. He's in his 30s, so it shouldn't have happened. But uh, that was the thing. And I went, I wonder, how they, I wonder how they view me. <laughs> Shit, I can't hold his wheel. But if you can't hold a wheel, if you're in a group situation of one that you would normally, that's a sure sign. And I mean, you're, you're going into it, but you think fairly rested. Yeah, oh yeah, I've been doing lots of training. So you may have a million and one excuses, but you've got to be honest with yourself. Hey, this is feeling a lot harder. Now, one off is okay. You can have a bad day. There could be just this sort of alignment of stars that your immune system is a little bit suppressed one day. But if it's continual, next time, next time, if it's going on maybe for a couple of weeks, this is a sign that you're fighting a losing battle when your body is talking to you and it's telling you to take a rest, but your ego is whipping you into a frenzy. Okay? Now, the last thing, the 10th point I want to say is, it's a really easy one, and it's a really easy one to follow. You don't want to go on your bike. Can you imagine that? You lose motivation. You lose that level of commitment. It's even quite a sunny day, and you think, Do you know what? I, just, I can't be bothered. This is a sign that there is a hormonal change in your levels of commitment, but the trouble with this, the brain doesn't decipher it doesn't uh, prejudice to your bike it does it to everything so suddenly you lose that motivation for work for your partner for yourself that's dangerous and i've seen this often and this is a real negative uh, impact of over you know fatigue overtired not overtraining there's a difference but just somebody who needs to take a rest, but they're being too harsh on themselves because they've maybe had a performance in a training session or in a race or in an event that didn't satisfy them. Didn't satisfy them. Can you imagine being Alistair Brownlee yesterday? Leeds triathlon, something he's created himself. It's in his own background. He gets disqualified for dunking an athlete who's in one of their first World Champion uh, World Series races came second in the end. He didn't mean to dunk him, really, did he? He tried to push him out of the way, but he did clear. And yet he's running, he's injured, and he finishes the race. He's well down, okay? Demoralising, but he'll take something positive from it, and he's had a great career. But for most amateurs, they'll have a performance that doesn't satisfy them. And they do the wrong thing. They try and go harder, train more, rather than sit down and say, okay... What's going on? What can I change? Can I add in a little bit more rest? You rarely hear that, do you? No, I need to train more. I need to train harder. True, but in a structured, platformed, ramped way when we've got some rest. Okay, so if you're losing that level of that fire in your belly, yeah, you're overtraining, you're tired, you need to rest. Okay, that is, I could talk all night about it. Yeah, so hopefully something's come up there that's maybe triggered something that you've been guilty of or you've done or you've even thought about or you're doing right now, right this very minute, okay? And you're not training. So where are your rest days per week? Where are your rest week? When are you having that period where you're going to come off the bike? Maybe do something else. And what about the signals and how are you listening to them and responding to them? How many key sessions a week do you need? Hey, look, two if you're fairly fit. Okay, if you're racing at the weekend, that would count as one. If you've got an event, as long as it works with your schedule. Another thing is about the timing of your training. Uh, many people start to do it late at night. So what is that cutoff point? I can see uh, some of my athletes in and I talk about it all the time. So for me, I know my own body. If I start a hard effort any later than seven o'clock. It's going to finish too late, eight o'clock. I want to be wound down, start cool down, finish. Can't start anything myself at eight o'clock at night. It takes me to nine, half nine. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sound like the Churchill dog. No, 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 no. Too late for me. So I know that. So if I miss that window of time, 
I may do an easy little spin and I'll just say, hey, look, knock it on the head. I've missed that day. And then I'm starting to go to plan B. Hey, I'll do this. I'll do that. Okay. So that's, that's important. Let me see if I have missed anything. Please tell me if that was okay. Give the chat a thumbs up if you've been liking it so far. Pop your questions in and I will get back to them. Hey, hey, hey. Thanks for asking if I'm okay. I'm a 5 out of 10 at the moment. I have the headache. She's still there. Yeah, I wish I'd been drinking whiskey for three days. Maybe I would have felt better. Two years avoiding COVID and then we volunteer for the job. Happy days. Exactly, Peter. Yeah, and I'm in a bloody shielding group with no immune system because of my Humera. And the fuckers jab me and bloody leak blood out me. And now I feel crap. I'm sure I'll be fine. When I felt heavily fatigued, Steve, in the past, when I stand up from the sofa, I go lightheaded. Yes. Okay, so I get the same thing, Steve. So make sure that you're really well hydrated. Before you stand up, do you know what you should do? Squeeze your leg muscles. So what we're trying to do is to send blood to the heart, okay? It's just that delay. There's a lack of blood being pumped out. Probably because, Steve, you have what's termed an athletic heart. Your heart is slightly bigger Therefore, the blood it pumps out at rest is not enough to get to that big, empty head of yours. Therefore, a little bit of low blood pressure can feel a bit. So, squeeze the, squeeze the thighs before you get up and make sure you're really well hydrated. So, if you get it, go and drink. It's not necessarily, it could be, yeah, I'm not a doctor. Uh, it could be low, low gl uh, glucose levels as people often associate with dizziness, but it's not always the case. It's just that blood flowing around the body, okay? So try that. Squeeze the legs, squeeze the ass. Don't stand up so quick. Remember, you're getting old, Steve. <laughs> uh, more like even some teachers aren't interested in school chat. <laughs> yeah, I know the type, more like. Let's move on, yeah. Idiots. I'll get better soon. Thank you, Stephen. I hope your issue, keep in touch with me about uh, the numbness, okay? <laughs> right, folks, are there any questions? I do love that little thing. I think I pressed it too quick there. So I did. Six foot four, so that makes sense. Yeah, it's a long way to that head. <laughs> You're the kind of guy that they always say, hey, what's the weather like up there? It's so funny, isn't they? Yeah, oh shit, you just want to smack them one, don't you? Right, folks, I got asked a question. Again, I'll, I'll go through a couple. I got asked a question about removing glue from tubs, heat. Yeah, don't, don't buy the glue remover, you don't need it, heat from a hairdryer, that'll get rid of them. People are asking me a lot about tubeless, tubular, tubeless, fine. Remember I did the session when I talked about a little bit of sealant and some air? You can use both, okay? If your tyres, your wheels are, uh, are tubeless ready, try a bit of both to start with. I would urge you, uh, if you can't go tubeless, yeah, do it, okay? Because it's going to help you get home at least. Now, what you've got to watch is, I am wanting... Somebody out there, a great entrepreneur, especially with tubular tires for the for the valve to get some strength, like a little polo mint to pop it on. I know you can get uh, patches like that and just drop it over the tube, put it on before people uh, people stick them on. Because so many people that, that it's that's where they have the problem round about the valve. But yeah, go tubeless, remove glue hair dryer okay i talked about tire pressures as well i've got asked a few questions because i was running a 28 on the ordo that was very clever of people to to notice that i am experimenting uh with it i haven't had another ride the next ride will be on wednesday hopefully i'll be feeling okay i'll ride it on wednesday with a really high stack i will share a little video of the height of the stack why a high stack this is to do with posterior chain muscle uh, contraction points. The higher the stack, the closer the hands and heads. So in terms of aero positioning, but also it's to do with muscle contractions through quads and hamstrings mainly. Uh, so I'll share that and I'll show you as we as we go a little bit lower with that as well. 
Okay, so that should be quite interesting because the the gains made from the width of the tyre are minimal, but obviously the gains made from the pressure and the contact point go up. Okay, they go up. And again, if you're thinking, we talked about it when we were talking about aero wheels. Yeah, don't get too bogged down with it. 30 to 40 mil is going to be fine. You're going to gain uh, more gains basically by not wearing crappy mitts. Than you are. Anybody watched the triathlon yesterday? I was screaming at, I think she was a Dutch girl or Brazilian. She was holding her bars and she was doing that at the front. I was like, oh, somebody told her that they're trying to deflect air. Also, going down into uh, extension poles in a drafting legal race. Can you see the hazards there? Yeah, it breaks. Always very interesting. Yeah, just tuck in behind somebody and get all the draft you want. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Yeah, you do that. Am I happy with the Orbea? Which model, Matt? That this one behind is the the that one there is the the Orca. So that is an, but it's an O M. It's an O M X. The O M R. You can see because you can see the cables. So the O M X is internal cables. So this one, I've ridden both. They're they're amazing. Look, they are amazing. Can you see how I've got it on on that one there? You can see the. I get my finger on it. The stack. I've got it really high, but I've got a very aero position on it now. So it works really, really well. Why do I love the Urbea? You get a bit more value for money. I am Mr. Urbea in Scotland. I know that and I will do their custom fits. This one you can see has got the, the DT Swiss, the new die cut, and they're I'm demoing them. Uh, so yeah, it kind of puts a little bit of a falseness to the, the, you know, the fantastic wheels. But again, the gains come position, postural strength. Okay, but this one we're trying with uh, 25 mil tyres. Anybody in the group or on the chat riding with 28 tyres, you know, what pressures are you riding at? Obviously, it depends on the type of riding you're doing in your own particular weight. Uh, but I'm quite fascinated by it. I've got a group of riders who are over in Portugal and the roads there, very, very smooth, very warm. Riding with 28s, running about 90 to 95 uh, PSI and some of them are riding at 85 on tarmac. And they're going very, very quick. So they are on 28s. Yeah, fast stuff. Okay, folks, uh, I'm going to leave on that happy note if there are no more questions. Please keep engaging with the channel. If you're on Catch Up, thanks for taking the time to join in. you got about an hour of great chat you've just been through. So you can leave a question. I will get back to you through the chat. And you can send an email to Kinetic Cycle Coaching at gmail.com as many of you have been doing and I will get back to you okay Gail 80 PSI that's what you're riding at Gail are you on 28s Gail uh, I think you are aren't you so yeah and you're probably you know going quite well yeah enjoying it it will give you that good control 80 PSI particularly on the, the roads that Gail's going to be doing so you're going to be on smooth and a little bit of broken tarmac. And that's going to give you that comfort ride. And Gail's on a custom or bear as well that I was very lucky to help her on. Oh, Peter, sensible advice with regards to rest days. Thank you, Scott. I will, I will without question take that on. But thank you, Peter. That's very kind of you. Yeah, listen to your body. And if you get the rest days right, guess what? You can train harder on the key days. And that's what it's all about. Remember we talk about the ceiling height of fitness? If you can't put your head above it, you're not improving. Why do so many people plateau and make no progress? Because they haven't got the ability to train hard enough because they haven't got the sense to rest long enough. There's logic there, okay? Find your way through that difficult journey of training and you'll come out with the same answers, okay? Thanks, Melvin. Uh, John, thank you. Yeah, Gail, I thought so. Yeah, I hope you're going well, Gail. Great to see you on the chat. Thank you for joining in. Real pleasure. Good old friend there. That's nice to know that people are engaging with the old coach. Right, folks, I'm going to go and try and get some fresh air, go for a walk, see if it will clear my COVID hangover. I think that's what I'm going to start calling it. And anyone else who's uh, been double vaccinated on that, I hope you are well. 
you got to remember, I'm a sick old man, so it was always going to happen. But I'm hoping to be able to get on the bike tomorrow and kick some ass. I think I'm the only person in the world left on 23s and 120 PSI. No, David. I've got a few time trialists I can show you of a certain vintage that are riding exactly the same. Yeah, remember, David, we used to ride 19 and even narrower millimetre tyres. I rode Land's End to John O'Groats, folks, solo ride, back in my prime, on 19 mil tyres. Yeah. Carrying my pack. 19 mil. I never got one puncture. <laughs> and I went quite fast. But yeah, 19. Like that. When you look at it now compared to the 25s and the 28s. Interesting. Thanks, Nikki. That's really kind of you. Hey folks, yeah, I'm going to go and get some fresh air, clear the head. Tomorrow, we are doing another sprint session. We're doing aerobic with activation intervals. It's going to be great. We'll have a little sprint challenge. We're going to have some cadence challenges. Let's have a speed challenge. Let's have a little peak power challenge as well at the end as we sprint to the cafe stop. We can have a virtual cafe stop. I might have something to eat during the recovery, okay, to make sure that we get that, that key uh, carbohydrate. Session tomorrow, Matt, very similar to last week, just a different length and number of the activation. So we're going to cruise aerobically between little pit stops and then sprint. So it's mainly a uh, two minute roundabout that we're going to be working around that sort of three minute range like I did last week. And we're going to have small activation sprints and we're going to put the gearing up. We're going to put the cadence up, but I'm going to set you guys challenges as well. I'll share my numbers as we go through and we'll have a little bit of fun. So it's a session that helps. So it's not an all out key session and it's not a recovery session. It's a bridge session. So it can be done after a hard session or the day before a hard session. Okay, so it's really good for that. I will possibly do a session in the morning with a couple of longer efforts and then I'll do this one in the evening just to give myself a chance to test the COVID and see how I am, okay? Okay, folks, that is me. I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm getting, I don't know what I'm getting. Oh, God, I need some rest, don't I? <laughs> okay, folks, take care. Give me a thumbs up. Leave your comments. Send me an email. Virtual high five. Remember, anyone can train hard. But there's only some of us can train smart and it's only some of us that make the progress. Okay, tadi -ay.